Now I want to show you an example problem using the mesh current method when we have a current source in the circuit. So when that happens, we, um, we call it a super mesh and we've got a cool technique for solving. So let me just show you an example circuit where that happens. Um, I'm going to put a voltage source over here and let's let this be 8 volts. Here's a 2 ohm resistor, here's a 2 ohm resistor, here's a 4 ohm resistor, here's an 8 ohm resistor, this is a 1 ohm resistor, and this is a 4 amp current source. Okay, so the, um, the process for using mesh currents to solve this problem is step number one is we want to draw in and label all of the inner loops. So we're going to label all inner loops. I'm going to say that I have a loop here and I'll call that I1 and a loop here, this is I2 and a loop here, this is I3. Okay, great. Now, um, it doesn't matter too much which direction your arrows go. You just need to pick a direction and then when we make our equations it'll um, handle if that is uh, the way the current is actually flowing in the circuit. So once we've done that, the next thing we want to do, um, and this is kind of like the special super mesh step when we have a current source here, is um, we want to just temporarily remove the branch that contains the current source. Temporarily remove branch with current source. And I wanted to show you an example where um, the branch also has a resistor. So if we remove this branch, we have to remove the entire thing, not just the current source. So this um, 1 ohm resistor actually also gets removed as kind of a casualty. So um, when we do that, we're left with this circuit that um, it's just going to have basically two loops, but one of those loops is like a super loop. And the key here is that we're still going to keep I1 and I2 and I3 loops in our circuit, but when we make our equations, we're going to treat this loop here that was created by removing this branch here as this one big loop, okay? So I drew it in blue so you can see that this is going to be the combination of both the I1 and the two I2 loops. And we're only doing this when we are writing our KVL equations. Okay, so let's do that. That's our next step. So step number three is we're going to write our sum of voltages equals zero equations for each loop but we're combining loops um, I1 and I2. Okay, so this sum of voltage equation, this is what KVL tells us we can do, that around any loop, if we add up all the voltage drops, we're going to get zero. Okay, great, so let's do that. My equations are going to be for the combined loop I1 and I2, this is what I get. So if I start Maybe I'll show you this. If I'm going to go around my new blue loop because I temporarily removed that branch that contains the current source, then the first thing I'm going to encounter if I start here and go up around is this 8 volt voltage source. Now, um, we in this class we talked about using the passive sign convention and that tells us that if we enter a circuit element through the negative terminal then we're going to go ahead and make that a negative voltage. Um, the the kind of opposite camp is you can say that um, since we go in this direction that this voltage source is providing positive voltage to the circuit and every time we encounter a resistor that is a voltage drop so that would be a minus voltage. Um, it's okay if you want to do it that way. I feel like that's kind of makes more intuitive sense but if you want to stick with a passive sign convention you can do that too. You just have to remain consistent for the entire problem. So let's go ahead and stick with the passive sign convention. Um, so that means when we enter this 
8 volt source, this is going to be a negative 8 volts. And then the next thing we're going to encounter as we come around this blue loop is this 2 ohm resistor. Now um, on the left side of this we have I1 is on is coming through and going in the negative or the bottom down direction and over here we have on the right side um, I3 is also touching this resistor so since they're going in opposite directions these currents are going to mesh and they're going to subtract so the question is which one do you subtract from which and the answer is since we're currently walking in the direction of the I1 loop we're going to consider I1 to be our positive current so that means our equation is going to look like 2 ohms times I1 minus I3. Okay, great. So then we're going to continue along this blue loop. The next thing we're going to encounter is this 4 ohm resistor. So remember, currently we're walking in the direction of this loop, but now we're in kind of the I2 region. And I2 is um, moving from left to right. I3 is also touching this 4 ohm resistor, but it's going from right to left, so in this direction. So that means in our equation, this is going to give us um, positive plus 4 times I2 is the positive one minus I3. Okay, and now when we continue along in this direction, the next circuit element we're going to encounter is this 8 ohm resistor. So this will just be 8 times I2, because that's the only current that's touching that um, 8 ohm resistor. And then we continue on. Remember, we've kind of pretended to remove this branch. We continue on until we get to where we started. Once we get to where we started, that means KVL tells us we can set this whole thing equal to zero. Okay, great. So then um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and simplify this equation because I'm going to need it in simplified form later. So if I divide everything by 2, this will give me a negative 4 plus I1 minus I3 plus 2 times the quantity I2 minus I3 plus 4 I2 is equal to 0. I'm going to distribute here, so this is 2 I2 minus 2 I3, and then I'm going to combine like terms. So I have an I3 term here and an I3 term here. I have an I2 term here and an I2 term here. So this gives me negative 4 plus I1 minus 3I3 plus 6I2 is equal to 0. Now I want to put this equation in standard form. So I'm going to order the terms I1, I2, I3 in that order, and I'm going to put this constant coefficient over on the right-hand side. Then it'll be in standard form. So I get I1 plus 6I2 minus 3 I3 is equal to positive 4. And now my equation is in standard form, and I'm going to need it in that form later. Okay, great. So we wrote the equation for our kind of super mesh loop here that was composed of loops 1 and 2. So now let's write our equation for loop 3. That is going to be at loop 3, loop I3, we have Let me move this so you can see. Okay, great. So suppose I start in this bottom corner, and I'm going to walk around this loop here. Um, since I'm currently doing the I3 loop, I'm going to consider the direction of my I3 current to be the positive direction. So that means that the if first I encounter this 2 ohm resistor, this is going to be I3 minus I1, because I3 is going to be, I'm going to consider to be the positive current. And now I continue around here. The next thing I encounter is this 2 ohm resistor. So this is 2 times I3 because I3 is the only current that passes through this resistor. As I continue on, the next thing I encounter is the 4 ohm resistor. So this will be plus 4 times I3 minus I2. And now I'm back to where I started. So I can complete this equation with an equals 0. All right, so let me do the same thing here. I'm going to um, simplify this equation. I'll divide everything by 2. That gives me I3 minus I1 plus I3 plus 2I3 minus 2I2 is equal to 0. Here I've got an I3 term. There's I3 terms. So this is going to give me negative 1I1 
minus 2i2 plus a 4i3 is equal to 0, and this is already in standard form. Okay, so check out our equations. We have two equations, but three unknowns. So this brings us to our next step, um, and that is we want to kind of zoom up on that branch that we removed. And that's going to give us our third equation so we can solve with three equations and three unknowns. So the next step is, we'll call this step number four, we are going to evaluate the branch that contained the current source to get the final equation. All right, so here's the branch that we removed. We had a current source, a four amp current source in series with a one ohm resistor. And then if you recall, over on this side, we had this I1 loop, and then over on this side, we had the I2 loop that was touching this branch. Okay, so um, if this branch has a four amp current source, that means we know that the current in this branch is four amps. So the way that these currents I1 and I2 are going to mesh is I'm going to say since I1 is in the same direction as um, the 4 amp current source, I'm going to make that be kind of my positive one. I'll have I1 minus I2, since they're in opposite directions at this branch, is equal to 4. Now this gives me my um, final equation. So my last step, once I have all those equations, is I'm just going to solve the system of equations. All right, so the system of equations that I have, um, I have three equations and three unknowns. They're all in standard form, so that means I can plug them directly into a matrix, um, put the matrix in row reduce echelon form, and um, have the matrix algebra do the work for me to solve for I1, I2, and I3. So here are my equations, I1 plus 6I2 minus 3I3 is equal to 4. The next one I got from loop 3 was negative I1 minus 2I2 plus 4I3 is equal to 0. And then the last one that I just came up with here was I1 minus I2 is equal to 4. So the way we put this into a matrix to solve for us is we're going to grab all the coefficients of the left hand side and then we're going to augment it with these sort of answers here on the right hand side. So it looks like this. Our matrix will be, coefficients are 1, 6, negative 3, and 4. For the second row, negative 1, negative 2, 4, 0. And for the third row is positive 1, negative 1, 0, because there's no I3 term, and 4. So now here's my 3 by 4 matrix. If I put this in row reduce echelon form, this is going to give me an answer that's the identity matrix, and then the last column of that will be all of my currents that I want to solve for. So you can use one of these, you can use your calculator, you can use one of these free um, row reduce echelon form calculators that I found online, so it's just rrefcalculator.com. And so I'm going to enter in my coefficients. I have 1, 6, negative 3, 4, and the second row is negative 1, negative 2, 4, 0. My third row is 1, negative 1, 0, and 4. And then when I press the button here, over here this final column tells me that I1 is equal to about 4.63 amps. My I2 is about equal to 0 0.63 amps, and my I3 is about equal to 1.47 amps. So let me know if you have any questions about um, doing problems that have a super mesh.